Hi, this is Drew Jones of Drew's Guitar Shop in Seattle, Washington, and this is going to be a little bit of a shaky cam video. I have to kind of move the camera around in this one to show you what I'm looking at, but I wanted to talk about the finish on this old Ohm banjo here. Now, this banjo is in fantastic condition. It's from the 1970s. Uh, it looks like it was kind of shut in the closet and just really not played. I mean, this thing is just pristine. It's like a classic car that's just been sitting in a garage. Like, it's just gorgeous. Hardly any play wear, hardly any road wear, just, you know, just beautiful. Um, but even instruments that have been really well treated and or isolated, um, such as this instrument here, will develop issues associated with their age. One of those issues has to do with nitrocellulose lacquer. Now, nitrocellulose lacquer is a pretty typical finish for the 1970s on back until you get to like the shellac era stuff, 1930s or so, and then you kind of go back from there. Um, and nitrocellulose lacquer, you know, it's, it's nitro, lacquer. It's, it's the finish that, you know, people put on custom guitars. It's got that sheen to it. It's easy to repair. There are a lot of advantages to it, but it does have some disadvantages. One of those disadvantages is that nitrocellulose lacquer has very poor adhesion relative to other finishes. Um, and what I mean by adhesion is, is that um, how firmly the stuff stays down on the surface that you sprayed it onto. Um, now, compound that with the fact that pearl, this is real mother of pearl that these inlays are made out of, has a, a thing where it really doesn't like materials to stick to it. Um, you end up running into this problem more frequently on banjos than maybe some other instruments. And what what's going on here is that um, we have finish that's kind of starting to peel away from the inlays on this headstock. This isn't due to any mistreatment of the instrument or damage or anything that's unusual. This is just a thing that happens to lacquer over time. And it's happening specifically in this case in these specific areas because pearl is a particularly hard thing to adhere anything to. Um, banjos tend to have a lot of fancy filigree and inlay on them uh, relative to some other instruments. And so, so I say banjos are kind of more prone to this sort of issue. But basically, if you kind of look where my uh, finger is, I'll kind of take this pencil, you can kind of see you know, where that inlay ends and you can see this little fissure that is formed in a nice little line right around that inlay. And it's possible that's going up over some fill material, but when I noticed this was when I took some naphtha and cleaned it because what happened with the naphtha was that this uh, fissure and everything under it just kind of drank it. And so it, the, the, uh, the naphtha, which is a fine, you know, kind of oily thing that I use for cleaning, just got really in there and just wicked right in there. And I was like, oh, oh boy. So we got some DLAM going on. Basically the lacquer or the uh, naphtha was filling in all of the areas that the lacquer had kind of peeled away from. And so this is a problem waiting to happen. Because this instrument has been so well treated, um, what we're not seeing is the chipping of the lacquer over the inlays, which is usually going to be the case if something has been handled at all. Because once this stuff starts de-adhering from these inlays and from other things, what tends to happen is that it'll take a little impact and we'll get a little nick in it and that's all it takes. It'll start flaking off around that area. And before you know it, you have these big patches where there's all this exposed pearl. Now, the issue with older instruments like this, and it usually is an older instrument when you're talking about this shellac or this uh, lacquer, is that lacquer also yellows with age. It develops this kind of amber hue to it um, that's uh, kind of hard to reproduce artificially. Like you can, you can go in, you can add some amber colorant to the finish that you're using to repair, but there's really no substitute for having the original finish on there with the original level of yellowing in it and you know, just keeping it, keeping it the way that it was. So what'll happen is that, you know, as this finish chips away from the pearl, the pearl will be bright white. Everything that still has finish around it will have that yellow tint to it. And it'll be very glaring um, as far as like, you know, difference in color. So I contacted this customer and what we're gonna do here is we're gonna do a little bit of a fix. Now we've already done a little bit of a fix around these tuners. Um, we're doing some drop fill with some lacquer because the finish underneath these tuners had also started blistering. And so we're saving the finish that was around those uh, blistering tuners. And um, we're also gonna have to re-adhere this stuff here. And what we're gonna do is two different solutions for these. 
Um, so for this guy, for these guys around here, we're basically going to be taking in, um, we're going to be taking in nitrocellulose lacquer. We're going to be dipping it in after um, what I did here, which was what I did here was I wicked some lacquer thinner in and then kind of clamped a nice flat surface on there with, uh, with some wax paper and uh, let it cure that way. And so we've re-flattened it, re-adhered the old finish, and we're just going to kind of drop fill on top so that we can get it all nice and level again. For this stuff, though, what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to use some kind of glue because part of the issue here is the adherence of the lacquer itself. So my preferred method of dealing with this is to take thin CA glue, so the nice, thin, watery stuff, this stuff here, um, and use a little dropper and let that CA glue just wick its way under there and get into all of the little cavities, all of those little gaps where the lacquer has started coming away and fill those in. And what it'll do is it'll put a layer of super glue, which the lacquer will bond to very well um, because they're both ketone based. And the super glue will also adhere to the mother of pearl much better than lacquer ever could. And so it's almost like you're putting a primer underneath the paint after the paint has already been, you know, put on, if that makes any sense. Um, but once we do this, we're going to have to go through and we're going to have to wet sand everything flat again, and we're going to have to buff it and we're going to have to clean it up. And so this is definitely a risky thing to do. Um, we're going to have to be very careful about how much, you know, how much uh, glue is left on the surface here because all of that is going to have to be sanded away with very fine grit sandpaper and every time you take sandpaper to finish you're risking burning through the finish and going into bare wood and at that point you have the same issue with the matching the color matching the age etc 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 and so this gets into some kind of delicate territory but we're going to see what we can do here to kind of um, rehabilitate this lacquer and to make this um, kind of more stable for uh, a touring playing recording instrument, which is what this is going to be used for. The person that bought this instrument does intend on using it quite frequently. So, um, you know, this, this kind of stuff here, this was probably fine for sitting in the back of the closet, but, you know, um, once this instrument kind of gets out into the world, this will start taking those little dings and uh, little scrapes and things that are going to open it up to that peeling that we were talking about. And um, this kind of is going to just preempt that. We're going we're gonna to keep that from happening and we're going to make this instrument look better for longer. So no downside aside from the fact that this is kind of a risky thing to do on finish. Um, this definitely isn't the kind of thing that I would, I would recommend that just anybody kind of get into. Um, when you get into wet sanding of any kind, finish work of any kind with nitrocellulose lacquer, like you're talking about really delicate work, dangerous work, this stuff is really poisonous to work with. It's explosive. Um, you know, it's, it's stuff that you got to kind of know a little bit about before you get into it. So, you know, be mindful guys. Um, that, you know, not everything on my channel, I, I just recommend, you know, anybody just, you know, kind of pick up, particularly like if it's your first time doing anything like this. Um, this is just something that I kind of wanted to talk about on the channel because it's something that I kind of see pretty frequently. And so if you run into this kind of, you know, kind of whitish sort of fissure that seems suspiciously close to some mother of pearl or some other kind of inlay, you know, just keep in mind that that lacquer has poor adhesion, and a lot of times what you're seeing here is evidence of it peeling away from the inlay or whatever material is under it. And in a lot of cases, what's the, you know, the next thing that's going to happen in, the, in, in that particular instance is that finish is going to start kind of chipping and flaking off because it's no longer actually adhered to the surface below it. So anyway, I'm going to go ahead and get to this repair. I'm going to see if I can do a either a second part of this video or a follow-up and, um, you know, show you how this ended up looking after. And, um, yeah, we'll go from there.